Visitor Center at the Hatfield Marine Science Center in Newport is a place where the public can learn about fascinating marine animals. This video shows how aquarists care for the animals at the Visitor Center, which is operated by Oregon Sea Grant. This video contains six segments, starting with a behind-the-scenes tour of our area where new and sick animals are quarantined and treated. Other segments showcase how aquarists feed the animals, take care of the octopus on display, care for and propagate coral, and clean the tanks. The holding area, known as the West Wing, is where we quarantine new animals and treat sick ones at the visitor center. Quarantining is necessary to prevent disease in the wild from being introduced into our tanks. It also gives our animals time to acclimate to their new environment. We receive assistance from Dr. Tim Miller Morgan, an aquatic veterinarian who oversees Oregon Sea Grant's aquatic animal health program. The West Wing is also where we keep animals that Dr. Tim Miller Morgan uses for teaching purposes at Oregon State University's College of Veterinary Medicine and in the Aquarium Science Program at Oregon Coast Community College. Students learn to examine these animals, some of which have been donated. They also learn to diagnose and treat diseases. We also raise baby fish such as shiner perch and pipefish in the West Wing, so we can later put them on display and also avoid collecting them from the wild. When shiner perch are born, they are big enough to eat the same foods that we feed the adults. Baby pipefish, on the other hand, are much smaller and require extremely tiny live foods. So in the West Wing, we grow brine shrimp and rotifers, two microscopic types of zooplankton that we feed algae, which are full of nutrients. After a mysterious disease began decimating sea stars along the Oregon coast in 2014, we built a tank in the West Wing to give our sea stars a safe refuge. Our tanks on public display in the visitor center get their water from Yaquina Bay. So if there's a problem with the water, like temperature fluctuations or the presence of disease, those problems can enter the tanks and potentially harm the animals. However, the tank in the West Wing area has a closed recirculating filtration and chilling system, which keeps the water self-contained, clean, and at a constant temperature. We test the water quality in the tank weekly and observe the sea stars in it daily. Whenever we hear that sea stars in the Yaquina Bay are dying, or if we see signs of stress in our own population on display, we transfer our sea stars out of our public exhibits to this tank in the back. This keeps them from being exposed to the water in the bay, and it allows them to build up their immune systems. Once water conditions appear steady, we put them back on display. As you can see at the visitor center, the health of our animals comes first. Many visitors are surprised to know that we feed our marine life restaurant quality seafood. This is because we are dedicated to providing the best nutrition possible to the animals at the visitor center. We prepare their meals in our food prep room and customize them to meet their needs. For example, an adult rockfish, a giant Pacific octopus, a pipefish, and a yellow tang all have different diets. Larger animals receive squid, fish, shrimp, and crab that we cut into bite-sized pieces. Animals with small mouths are fed small krill, shrimp, fish, and worms.
Even our filter feeders get specialty-made diets, some of which come from our own live culture area in the west wing of the center. There, we grow brine shrimp and rotifers, which are microscopic zooplankton that can easily be consumed by a filter feeding coral, mussel, or anemone. And let's not forget about the herbivores. Animals like yellow tangs, sea urchin, and chitons are grazers and do best with lots of vegetation in their diet. We feed these animals seaweed, as well as lettuce, broccoli, and cucumbers. We also prepare medicated food by mixing powdered or liquid vitamins and medications with water and letting the mixture harden overnight. When we feed our animals, we have to make sure the food is getting to them. Our juvenile big skates, for example, are in the tank with multiple rockfish and sculpins, all of which are faster swimmers than the skates. To help the skates get to their food first, we use a feeding pole that has a plastic lid attached to the end of it and food on a skewer in front of the lid. The skate swims to the lid because they have been trained to recognize its shape. We have also trained our ratfish and moray eel to eat from feeding poles. This is often referred to as target feeding. As you can see at the visitor center, the health of our animals comes first. Octopuses are incredibly smart animals that need to be stimulated and properly taken care of. How do we do that at the visitor center? It starts with the environment the octopus lives in. An exhibit tank is not a natural home for an octopus, but if we can make it as much like the wild as possible, these curious animals will want to explore the tank more frequently. Our tank includes multiple rock formations. Populated by the same kinds of anemones and sea stars the octopus would encounter in its ocean environment. When visiting our facility, you may notice different toys in the octopus tank. We introduce new toys often, mixing a variety of textures and sizes in order to engage our octopus through interactive stimuli. Toys are also a great way to allow the octopus to interact with our staff. One toy we have found to be entertaining is a watering can. It seems they enjoy the feeling of the water being poured over them like a shower. Another way we can stimulate our octopus is by varying the diet our octopus receives as well as how it is delivered. We place the food in a container giving the octopus a chance to hunt for the container and then figure out how to open it. You can watch us feed our octopus up to three days a week, either in person or via our live streaming cameras. You can watch the live stream by visiting the Visitor Center's website. You may think of corals as rocks, but they're actually animals with stomachs, mouths, and tentacles. Just like other aquatic animals, they need to be properly taken care of to survive. We monitor their lighting, water flow, water chemistry, and nutrition to ensure that the corals grow into colorful colonies. That means making sure that the symbiotic algae living inside the tissue of the corals are healthy. 
The algae, called zooxanthella, provide the striking colors we see in corals. Like plants, these algae get their energy from light in a process known as photosynthesis. So we place LED lights above each tropical exhibit to provide the algae with the wavelength of light they need to thrive. Water flow is also important. It delivers oxygen and microscopic food to the corals and removes waste. On a coral reef, water flow is constantly changing due to the weather, tides, and other factors. In our coral exhibit, we circulate the water using pumps that are mounted to the inside of the tank. They provide the shifting, swirling currents that corals need to grow and remain healthy. Nutritional supplements are also essential to the coral's survival. We feed our corals calcium, amino acids, and other vital elements to build their skeletons. We also feed them small live food, such as rotifers and phytoplankton, on a daily basis. Diligent monitoring, care, and maintenance are essential when it comes to the survival and growth of all corals. Our coral fragmentation exhibit shows corals that have been propagated in captivity. Behind the scenes, we keep small colonies of corals, which grow until they are ready to go on display. Coral fragmentation is important because it allows hobbyists and professionals to grow and share their own corals instead of collecting wild corals from reefs around the world. The process of fragmenting corals involves gently cutting a small piece from a larger coral. Once the cut has been made, we glue the fragment to a ceramic disc, which makes a sturdy base. Super glue is an ideal adhesive because it does not harm the corals and hardens underwater. Most coral colonies grow around 2 centimeters a year, but under ideal conditions, some corals can grow 10 centimeters or more per year. With the correct care and maintenance, these small coral fragments will continue to grow and thrive in their aquarium environment. Just like our own homes, fish tanks accumulate dirt and must be cleaned regularly. To clean the walls of the tanks, we must use a special scrubbing pad that does not scratch the acrylic sides. To reach the bottom of our larger exhibits, we attach the pads to long poles. The rock and the sand at the bottom of our tanks is a place where detritus and dirt can accumulate. To remove this, we use a gravel vacuum. This apparatus, also used in home aquariums, is a hose attached to a larger, rigid tube. As water flows through the tube, suction tumbles the rocks and removes the dirt. The wastewater then goes down the drain. After we have cleaned an exhibit, we clean and sanitize all the tools before they are used in another tank to prevent the spread of disease. If there is a disease in one tank, it can easily be spread from tank to tank on the cleaning tools. To prevent this, we use a chemical called Vercon, which is used throughout the animal care industry. After that, we soak our tools in another chemical called sodium thiosulfate to neutralize the Vercon before using the tools again.
The result? Clean tools, clean tanks, and happy, healthy animals.